Anyways, I'll write them down here and we'll, we'll use those as our starting example, okay? So um, what we have in the notes, there's five equations, right? And I'm gonna write those down here. So the first equation is one s one plus two s two plus zero s three is equal to six and that's six mod 19, okay? So this is the idea. This is a, um, it's a linear equation, right? The variables in this are S1, S2, and S3. And what we're gonna do going forward is we, we need to keep this notation for the purposes of setting up a system. But when we actually go to solve it, what I do and what I recommend you do as well is change those over to X, Y, Z, right? Or X, Y, or how many variables we're dealing with. The standard linear algebra approach is to label them X, Y, Z, and then solve the system. Okay, but to actually set up the problem properly, we're going to need to run these subscripts to get it to work. Okay, so these are the so-called secrets, and we have three of them, right? So maybe we can write that down right now. There are three secrets in this particular, and it doesn't extend over here. Right? There are three secrets. Okay, so n is equal to three so-called secrets. Secrets in this case are S1, S2, and S3. So that's one component. The other component we have, the notation we have, is this is considered to be one sample, right? So in other words, one equation containing the secrets in some sort of linear combination, and then given a sum, modulo 19, and we'll get to that, it's considered one sample, right? This particular example, we're given five samples. So I'll write them all out on the board here, all right? So the next sample is going to be 4s1 plus 5s2, 6s3, that's equal to 0 by 19. Okay, the one after that is 7s1, 7s1, 8s2, 9s3, it's equal to 14 mod 19. Okay, so there's first three samples and then we'll do the other two just so we're in sync with the notes. The other two are 2s1, s5, s2, plus 7, s3, and that's equal to 17, 19. And then the last one is 0s1, plus 9, s2, Plus three S three is equal to eight mod nineteen. Okay, and it's useful when you're writing out these big systems, especially when you're writing them out manually, like on your quiz. Just take a second to see that you've transcribed all of those coefficients correctly, right? Very easy to make a little slip slip up here um, and get one of the coefficients wrong. So I'll just do a quick scan through so four, five, six. 789257093 and our hand sign values are 6, 0, 14, 17, and 8. Okay, looks good. So um, each equation has, in this case, three secrets, and we're, we're given a total of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five equations. Those are called the M samples. Okay, so we have M is equal to five equations, but they're called samples. So the samples with the secrets taken together with their right-hand side values form the actual problem. Right? The problem also has a prime modulus, right? So every one of these calculations, whenever you take a certain combination of the secrets and you get a right-hand side value, that is modulo Q, right? So in this case, we have all the 19s, right? All of these modulus values, 19s. Q is equal to 19. And uh, what we have um, in the definition of the learning with errors problem is that Q must be a prime number significantly larger than the number of secrets, okay? So we must have that Q is prime, Q is prime, and that Q must be significantly larger than the number of secrets, okay? 
Um, I actually couldn't find a, you know, so one of the things is when you, when you encounter statements like this, Q significantly larger, right? Quantify significantly larger. I can't find anywhere that actually quantifies what they mean by significantly larger. Uh, my assumption is that you can't have Q being one or two more than N, right? So, for example, in this case, if N is equal to three, I can't pick a prime of five, right? So, you need to be at least a leap or, or let's say two or three times, right? Um, it doesn't matter because the problems that you'll be solving, I've, I've already set them up, right? Um, but it is one one point that I just couldn't find it in uh, Rejev's work on the on learning with errors. I couldn't find that quantification there. So basically, I looked at the examples that um, uh, that he used and determined that well, basically, what he's doing is whatever n is, he's making that at least ten times as large, and that seems to be good enough for him. Right. Um, so let me just see here. So Steffi says, is that zero s two or zero s one in the last equation? It is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, steady. Thank you. This is zero S one for sure. Okay, so that has to be all ones, all twos, all threes. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. And Daryl also corrected that too. Yeah. So this should be zero S one. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Well, we have all the math. Now, now we set the stage here with an example and we can draw out the general math that's being used. Right? So these right hand side values, six, zero, 14, 17, and eight. These are called the B values in a learning with errors problem, okay? And in this case, because this is the first sample, this six would be equal to B1, right? So this is equal to B1. And here's the thing, the notation that we have to use in the is a superscript and a subscript. The superscript does not mean B to the first power. It's actually an index, all right? So you're going to see a lot of things that, and this is when you do linear algebra, you get superscripts and subscripts everywhere. And it's a pet's nest. No one's figured out a better way to do it. So you just have to live with it. All right. So in other words, on this next line, when I write B to the two, it doesn't mean B squared. Okay. This does not mean B squared. What it means is the second right hand side value. So in other words, zero is equal to the second B value. So first sample, first B value, second sample, second B value, right? Um, so this would be equal to B cubed, <laughs> not B cubed, the third B value. This is the fourth B value, and this is the fifth, okay? So remember that because, again, the notation looks a little weird, right? So what do we have? Well, if we look at the right-hand side, we can see that this B value of, in this case, six, is equal to the sum of the coefficients 1, 2, and 0 times the respective secrets. So we can write that out mathematically. Okay? So this B value is equal to the sum, in this case, of J is equal to 1 all the way to 3. I have three secrets. Okay? Of J is equal to 1 to 3. And we're going to take each coefficient, so this, this is what we're going to call A11. This one is going to be A12. I'll write them on the board. Okay. So this one is called, this two is going to be called A12. Zero is A13. So what we have that, so obviously if we go all the way down here, this zero right here would be A51. Okay? So this zero would be equal to A, the fifth sample, but the very first one. Okay? So that's the, when you see all the, the A and B values, that's what they're referencing. A's are the coefficients of the secrets, and the B values are their final sums. Right? So... Over here, long story short, what are we going to do? We're in the first sample. So we're going to be taking all of the coefficients from the first sample, A superscript 1. So this will be A superscript 1. But then we have to use the subscripts as the index for J. Right? So the subscripts, A sub J times the J secret. Okay, So we have three secrets, J is equal to 1 to 3. Each of the coefficients are going to be lined up, but we're going to take them all from the first so, and then this pattern continues, right? So the pattern, pattern continues. It would be the exact same thing for um, 
the next row or the next sample. So I'm going to put j is equal to 1, 2, 3. But in this will be the second row. So our second row coefficients, we're going to take the j subscript of those and line them up with the j secrets. Okay? So this goes all the way down to this last one, right? So you can see the pattern. We're just changing the, the, row, uh, the row number, right? Row 1, row number 2, sample number 1, sample number 2, etc. And we can generalize this, and this is what I'm getting to. The learning with errors problem, when you generalize it, is basically this. Here's what you have in general. You have bi. So bi, the right-hand side value of the ith sample, is equal to sum j is equal to 1 to n. In this case, n is equal to 3 because we have three secrets, but you can have four secrets, five secrets, 100 secrets. Right? So j is equal to 1 to n of a sub i. So coefficients from the i throw, subscript j times sj. So hopefully uh, what that gives you is a connection to, so basically if you open up any document, that, that tries to describe learning with errors, what, what that document will probably do is throw this at you right away, right? And you look at you, that and you go, well, thanks a lot, right? What, what does that mean? That's what it means. You're taking this lattice system and you're compacting it down to just what you need to know, right? So when you, you know, when you hear learning with errors described as um, lattice-based problems, this is a lattice. It is all the linear combinations of these secrets, right, in the right-hand side values, okay? And it works because you're doing everything law to prime number. And again, that's that sort of intersection with numbers, number theory. You're going to need to use a prime number here so that every single linear combination has an inverse, right? You can't get stuck with trying to find the inverse of 3 mod 15. Well, no inverse exists because 15 is not a prime number. So you're going to need all primes to make sure that all the possible sums from 1 to n minus 1, where that, the prime is n, have inverses so you can solve the system. Um, so there you go. There's learning with errors. Actually, I'll say this, right? So this is learning with errors without the errors. Okay. So we've, we've done everything but throwing the errors in. And what I want to do is actually solve this system first before we complicate it with errors. Okay. So I'll just put it in here. So questions about learning with errors, dot, 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 without the errors. Okay. So questions about basically just framing the problem using linear algebra notation. Even though there's no errors in here. Because yeah. there's more than enough to keep us busy for hours with this setup. So the mod, so, so Jessica, it's like um, uh, the mod, so when you say Q is equal to 19 and everything is mod 19, think of it as follows. Every calculation you do on the lattice is mod Q, right? So if you define in your problem Q to be equal to 19, every time you do a calculation, if it's above 19, you reduce it mod 19 and you, you compute the residual, right? If your answer goes negative on the wrong side of zero, you add 19 to it to get it back up to, to uh, the reason, the range of basically zero to 18. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but is there a reason why they don't add that in the generalized? Oh, it, it is, right? So this is, again, it's because it's a, no one ever bothers to write it because it's assumed that it's always there. But for sure, you can add this in. This is mod Q. Okay, so everything, and then this becomes um, a congruence if you want. But it just adds detail, right? The, the reason why people leave these things out is it adds, now you have a congruence that you have to sort of navigate and you have this modulus. Most people will just use the shorthand, and I'm going to erase it soon because I don't, I don't remember it like this. Uh, most people will just use the shorthand and realize that a lattice-based problem has a prime modulus lurking behind everything, right? So... Okay, so in the generalized equation, you'll see that. You'll see that in the notes too, right? At least I hope so. I hope I put that somewhere in the notes. 
but you'll find I quickly drop it when I'm actually working through problems. And you'll just see computations go from, say we're, we're doing something mod 19, and we end up getting 20, an answer of 21. All I'm gonna do is say 21 is equal to two mod 19. So it's kind of like this reflex that we go through when we're doing the actual computations, we just reduce everything mod 19, right? Okay. Um, Kern says, what's the purpose of the secret? So here's the thing, right? Um, in the crypto system, the secrets are your private key. Okay? So the Rejav crypto system, the secrets, the actual recipe here, the coefficients that make this all work are your, um, are your private key that you keep secret to yourself. Um, and only with the knowledge of those secrets can you actually decrypt the original binary, right? From the, uh, uh, from the ciphertext that you're given, right? So the region of crypto system, in addition to being on a lattice uh, like this, with all this linear algebra going on, it has a ridiculous amount of overhead. But again, that's the price you pay for essentially uh, something that's resistant to any forms of computation. Right? You just can't break it at all. So that's the purpose of the secrets, right? They're, they're originally, so next week, we're not even going to do it this week, but next week, you can take a peek at the notes. The secrets become your private key, all right? Um, okay, so uh, let me just say, so we stay consistent here. I'm going to take this away. Okay, so the answer is yes, it should be showing mod Q, but I don't want to run out of board space because we, you notice I've left a little slot here to add the, the errors when we do our, after we do our first example. Okay, so let's do the first example. And what we're going to do is solve the learning with errors problem in the ideal case where there are no errors. Okay? So if you don't add any errors to this, you can solve this system. And the way that you do it is you use the traditional linear algebra techniques of, I have three unknowns. In this case, I have three secrets, S1, S2, X3, uh, sorry, S1, S2, S3. I'm gonna call them X, Y, Z, and I'm gonna pick any three equations from this, from the five samples, and those three equations will give me enough information to solve for the three unknowns, okay? So that's the general technique. In the ideal case where there are no errors, you can pick any equations you want, and you're going to need enough of them to solve for the number of secrets. In this case, three secrets means we're going to need three equations. Okay, so Curran says, what's S1, S2, and S3? And that's what we're going to do. So Curran, we're going to find out what S1 and S2 and S3 are, right? We're going to go through the linear algebra exercise of solving a system of modular equations, because everything is mod Q, in this case, we're going to use the, so and it's up to you to arbitrarily pick, but there's an advantage here. I can see it with picking the first three. Okay, so we're going to pick the first three equations. The advantage is, is there's an, I can see an easy way of reducing these three equations and three unknowns to a system of two equations and two unknowns. And then there'll be an, an easier step of going from two equations and two unknowns to one equation and one unknown, which is basically the value of one of the sequence. Okay, so you want to reduce your three by three system to a two by two, reduce the two by two to a one by one, which gives your answer, and then substitute back up the chain to get the values of X, Y, and Z, or in this specific case, S1, S2, and S3, right? So let's do that. We'll flip the board. And what we're basically going to do is think of it like this. We have five pieces of information. We only need three. So we're just going to take this as a snapshot. Okay, so we're going to take this. And we're going to change all the S sub 2, S sub 3, S sub 1s over to X, Y, Z. You don't have to do this, but I find that 99% of math people would rather solve using variables X, Y, Z because it's just faster. You don't get confused with the sum. Remember I made this mistake earlier, right? So Steffi, you pointed out, made the mistake of calling this S2. That's deadly if you're solving a system of linear equations, right? So to avoid that type of confusion, we usually use X, Y, Z, A, B, C, or something like that. All right? So let's do that. Flip it over and solve the ideal case. Okay, so the ideal case here, I have a reduced, I have a simplified one. I'll just write it on the board, but basically we're gonna take the first three samples first First three samples, 
from our overall learning with service problem. And those we're going to do a swap of variables and we'll call them this. So we're going to have 1x plus 2y plus 0z is equal to 6. And again, I'm not going to write in all the mod. There is mod 19 everywhere, but I'm not going to write it in. I'm just going to evaluate mod 19 as we get things that are greater than 19 or less than 0. Right? So 4x our second equation, 4x plus 5y plus 6x is equal to the second right-hand side value, which is 0 in this case. Okay, And then finally, the last one is 7x plus 8y plus 9z. The sum for those was 14. Okay, again, it's a good idea just to make sure you transcribe everything. So we have 1, 2, 0, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 0, and 14. Okay, looks like we're good to go. All right? So um, the name of the game is here's a 3 by 3 system. So three equations, three unknowns. The, you have several choices. Those of you who have some other techniques from linear algebra and you know how to reduce these, you can go ahead and use those. I, I, I'll recognize it. Just show your work, right? Um, what I recommend is stick with what's called, it's called the elimination of variables method, right? And it goes something like this, right? If you don't have any inspiration of what, what variable you want to eliminate, you just start with the very first one. So I'm going to look at the x variable, and I'll look at this and realize that I have a coefficient of 1. So basically, if I take this equation and multiply it by 4, and then subtract the second equation from that, the x variable will vanish, and I'll be left with two variables, namely y and z, right? So I'm going to do that with the first pair, and then I'm going to do it again with the first and last pair. So I'm going to take that first equation, multiply everything by 7, subtract this third equation, and the x variable will vanish again. That'll be, that'll be the first step in reducing this 3 by 3 to a 2 by 2. Okay. So the other thing that you usually do in a system of equations like this is you number the equations as need be, right? So for the opening move, I'm going to call this equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. Okay. And then what you can do is you can show what you're doing here by saying, well, first of all, I'm going to take one times four and subtract three from it. Okay. So in other words, the opening move is going to be to take one times four and write that result here, and then we'll subtract three from this. So equation number three. Okay, and there's no, there's no, you know, you use whatever you no notation you want here. Um, usually you put it off to the side, the margin, but I know I don't want to, don't want to run out of too much whiteboard space to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're taking equation number one and multiplying it by four, right? So one times four is four x, and you can put a little dividing line here. So one times four, this is four x plus two times four would be eight y. Right. 0 times 4 would be 0z. And here we have the case where the modulus is going to kick in, right? 6 times 4 is equal to 24, and 24 can be reduced mod 19. Our q is equal to 19. It's our modulus everywhere. Okay. So this, you can write it as an intermediate, intermediate step. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. But then what you usually do is you immediately reduce that, right? So reducing 24 mod 19 would give you 5, okay? So this is 5 mod. And you can put in a little mod 19 here just to remind yourself why you're subtracting 19 arbitrarily, right? You'd never do this. You'd never, ever do this if you were doing regular linear algebra without the modulus, right? So this would remind anyone looking at your work that, oh, yeah, it's a linear with errors with problem. Prime modulus is involved. That's what we're doing here. Um, so now what we're going to do is take away equation, sorry, we're not going to take away equation number three, we're going to take away equation number two. Okay. So we're going to subtract equation number two, and basically to do that, we just write equation number two and put a negative sign around it. Okay. So equation number two is 4x plus 5y, 6z is equal to zero. And we're going to sign that negative, subtract them. So here's the goal of this first step. 4x minus 4x is 0x. Okay? So x has been eliminated. You can 
put a big scratch through it or whatever, right? But it's gone, right? Um, 8x minus 5y, this is plus 3y. And 0z minus 6z will be negative 6z. And again, 24 minus 0 is the same thing as 5 minus 0. This is equal to 5. Okay, so we have this equation, and it's a good idea, again, if you don't want to allow your numbers to get too negative, is to immediately apply a mod 19 to this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this into a 3y. And instead of having this being negative, I'll add 19 to it, so it'll be a plus 13z is equal to 5. Okay, so there's my first equation that I've reduced. Uh, so we've, we've reduced these two equations to a single equation with two variables, right? Now we have to do, okay, so let's do it again here and we'll add another bar. Okay, and in this case, what we're going to do is reduce, let's reduce equations one and three, right? So we're going to take equation one and multiply it by seven and then subtract equation three from that, okay? So I'll put some, some notes on the board. So we have equation 1, 7. I'm going to subtract equation 3 from that. So let's do that. Equation 1 times 7. So everything on the top times 7. So this would be 7x plus 14y plus 0z is equal to, again, 6 times 7 would be 42. Okay, 6 times 7 here would be 42. And 42 obviously can be reduced by 19. We have 19. If we take two of those, we get, uh, what do we get, 38. So there's a remainder of 4 on that. So this is 4. Okay, so that's our equation on the top. Equation number 3, we'll just rewrite it underneath and put a bracket around it, sign it all negative. Okay, so our equation underneath is 7x plus 8y plus 9z is equal to 14. This will get signed negative every single term of that. We'll see what we end up with, right? So we'll do our subtraction here. I'll just change, make sure you can see the bottom of the screen. Okay. So 7 minus 7, this gives us 0x, and that was the goal, right? So 0x, again, we wanted to eliminate that variable. Um, 14y minus 8y leaves 6y. So plus 6y. And 0z minus 9z is minus 9z. And 4 minus 14, so you can do this 42 minus 14 and then reduce it mod 19 if you want. But keep the numbers smaller here, let's actually use four. So four minus 14 would be minus 10. So there's minus 10, right? And we have just enough space here to get rid of those negative signs mod 19, right? So the six Y won't change, we still have six Y, but this, negative 9z, we can add 19 to that and make it positive 10, so plus 10z, okay, because nine, 19 minus 9 is equal to 10, and then of course on this side, this negative 10, it's on the wrong side of 0, so we add 19 to that to get 9, okay, and there's 9, so there would be on the bottom our next equation. So what I'm going to call is, I'll call these equations three, uh, I'll, it, I'll call it equation four and five. Okay. And equations four and five taken together constitute the reduction of this three by, three by three system into a two by two system. Because we have two equations, right? so one, two, and two unknowns, y and z. So the idea now is we're going to uh, put 4 and 5 together, and we're going to try to reduce those, right? Um, so let's do that. Uh, we'll, we'll move those up to the top of the, um, the next sort of column that we have here. And we'll think about what's the best way to eliminate 
and you know arbitrarily let's eliminate the y variable one thing we can do is multiply equation four by two so that this becomes six y and then we can just subtract equation five from it okay so let's just add that as what our uh, strategy is here so we get a little vertical bar at the top here what we'll do is we'll take uh, equation number four times two and we'll subtract five from it so four times two we'll be taking this guy which is three y so this will be six six y six y plus twenty six dead and that's going to be equal to 10. Okay, so 3 times 2 is your 6, 13 times 2 is your 26, and uh, 5 times 2 is equal to 10. Okay. And you can reduce this too. Right? So you can reduce this, so maybe we'll take another step here and reduce everything by 19. This is the same thing as 6y 26 minus 19 will give you 7. Right, 6y plus 7z is equal to 10. So this is really what we're going to use for our equation number 4 times 2. And now what we'll do is we'll subtract 5 from that. So minus equation number 5. So equation number 5 is the 6y plus 10z is equal to 9. So 6y plus 10z is equal to 9. We're going to set that negative Let's see what we get so we've designed it so that the y's vanish so 6y minus 6y this is 0y okay. and 7z minus 10z will give us a negative 3z and 10 minus 9 will give us a 1 okay um, one of the things we can do is because so this this 0y again this is the goal eliminated one variable and we're down to a one by one system which is one variable one equation right basically the answer is right here but what we have to do is first of all math this to a positive number right so negative three if i add 19 to that that's equal to 16 right so this is 16 z and that's equal to one okay so this is basically our last equation that equation what do we have to now four or five we'll call this equation six okay so equation six and we need to solve equation six for uh for z and what you've done if you've done linear algebra up to this point is you just divide both sides by 16 right get your answer um we're doing modular arithmetic there is no division right you can't do division here you can only multiply by inverses. So we need to find the inverse of 16 mod 19. Okay, so we need to, to be able to solve this, we need, we need the inverse of 16 mod 19. Okay, and what is the best way of getting the inverse of something mod n? You guessed it, it's your old friend. It keeps coming back. It's never going to go away. It'll be with you for the rest of your life, the EEA. So we'll use the EEA. Use the EEA to do it. And again, for the EEA, this, this one is, is relatively easy to do. So we set it up using the EEA. Here is 19, and we, what, what do we need? The inverse of 16. So here's our 16, here's our S and T column. And again, it goes 1, 0, 0, 1. And away we go, right? So 19 minus 1 times 16 would give you 3, right? 19, you can take away 16 once and get 3. And then we can take 16, 16, and subtract, what, 5 times 3? 5 times 3, so 16 minus 15, that would be equal to our 1. There's our stop point. And all we need to do, I'm just doing the EEA fast. We can forget about the S column here and just work out what we have for the T column. So the T column, I have 0 minus 1 times 1. So this will be negative 1. And our inverse is going to be found here. Our inverse will be 1 minus 5 times negative 1. So 1 minus 
plus five times negative one, which ends up being one plus five, which is six. Okay. So the inverse of um, 16 mod 19 is six, right? EEA. Okay, so this is a little EEA, a little EEA cameo, right? So the EEA comes in for its cameo after its long career in math courses here in the security program. It's still making its way into the whiteboard. Um, so to solve it, again, we can divide both sides by 16, but you can multiply both sides by the inverse. And that's what we'll do. Okay, so we have six times 16 Z is equal to one times six, right? And 16 times 16 Z is gonna go to one mod 19. So Z is equal to six. Okay, so there's your solution. And so it does look a little weird going from here, 16 Z is equal to one to Z is equal to six, but it's because Z is the inverse of 16. So let me just see, uh, Yash says, how did you reduce six Y plus 26 Z is equal to 10 to six Y plus seven Z? Oh, it's uh, because this, so 26, is if we take 26 minus 19, we get seven. Remember, every when you're working on the lattice in a learning with errors problem, every computation should be and can be, but should be reduced by the modulus, right? So what that means is in this case, Q is equal to 19. You get anything that's 19 or greater, you should be bringing it back down to where it should be, which is between zero and 18, right? You get anything that's less than zero, bring it back up to where it should be between zero and 18, okay? Good. Um, okay, so there's there's one part of the solution. And now, now basically we have to go back up the chain to for the other two variables, right? So let's think about what's the easiest equation to use to solve for the other variable. I, you know, um, arbitrarily here, we could use, uh, let's just plug it into, you know, I'll check and I'll see how I did this before. Sometimes there's an advantage to doing it faster, but I don't think there's any, any issue here that I do. I went with is equal to six and then put it back into, okay, so we'll put it back into six Y plus 10 Z. Okay. So apparently that, so we'll take our solution and put it back into five, right? It really doesn't matter. You'll get an answer no matter what, but there's some roots that have fewer steps. So let's take, um, again, as an indication, we're gonna take Z is equal to six and we'll substitute that into um, equation five. Z is equal to six into equation five gives you six Y. So six Y plus 10 times six is equal to nine, right? And solving here, we get six Y plus uh, 10 times six is equal to 60. It's equal to nine. And so moving that over to the other side, or you can reduce it mod 19, but we have six Y is equal to negative 51. And then that minus 51, now we should really be uh, reducing this mod 19. So what do we have? Minus 51, we can add plus two times 19. We should be able to do that plus another 19. So that'll give me a six. Actually, this one has an easy solution. This one. 6y, this is why I did it this way. This is equal to 6. 6 minus 51 is 6, um, 19. And we actually know what the inverse to 6 is. It doesn't matter because it's obvious that y is equal to 1 in this case. But if we actually needed the inverse, we know that the inverse of 6 is going to be 16. Okay? It's not sufficient just to say that y is equal to 1. y is equal to 1. So we've got Z, we've got Y, and now we just need to go back and find X. So for X, the obvious choice here to use is equation number one because it has a coefficient of one, right? Those are always the easiest. So we'll just substitute uh, our equation into, so we have final part is taking uh, Z is equal to six, Z is equal to six, 
y is equal to 1, and substituting that into equation 1. So equation 1 was the original one here. We have 1x plus 2 is 1 plus 0, 6 is equal to 6. Okay, so x plus 2 is equal to 6, and move this 2 over the other side, and you get x is equal to 4. That will do it. Okay, so therefore, therefore, the secret x, y, z, which in our original problem we called s1, s2, and s3, original secret of uh, three things, is 4, 1, and 6. So x is equal to 4, y is equal to 1, z is equal to 6. Or s1 is equal to 4, s2 is equal to uh, 1, and s3 is equal to 6. All right? Uh, Josh? Yep? Uh, doing it this way, if we subbed in those x, y, z into any of those equations now, they all will equal those moduluses on the end? That's right. Because they're so, so th that's, that's a really good question, right? If we were to go back to, so first of all, these, these values of 4, 1, 6 um, will, if you plug them into any three equations here, they'll give you these values on the right. So if we try plugging in 4, 1, 6 into this equation, we get 4 plus 2 plus 0 is equal to 6, right? We try the same thing for equation number two and three, we're gonna get the sums of zero and 14 respectively. But more than that, if we go back to our original problem that had more than three equations, it actually had five, 416 will solve all five of them, right? And that's why it didn't matter when you're solving without errors, it doesn't matter which uh, equations you, you select to solve and find your solution because they're all gonna work, right? It's only when you add the errors that everything goes off the rails. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. Good. And Jessica asks, so what's the need of having more samples if you're bound by the number of secrets? Yeah, it's all about the errors. So you're, so Jessica, your question, it, we basically now have to go back and, and put the errors in and you'll see. Okay. So let's go back to the other board um, and see what happens when you add errors. So we found a particular solution. We know that without errors, um, this entire system is solvable. So we'll just take note here. So without errors, without any errors, um, this whole system, system, solution, Solution S1 is equal to 1, S2 is equal, no, uh, 4, right? It's 4, 1, 6, S1 is equal to uh, 4, S2 is equal to 1, S3 is equal to 6, okay? And that's what we showed on the previous board, right? We manually, um, we manually went through and did the um, reduction of the 3 by 3 to a 2 by 2 to a 1 by 1 to get Z is equal to 6, Y is equal to 1, um, X is equal to 4, and that will solve these other two as well. So if you plug in 416 into this sample and this sample, you'll find the sums are 17 and 8. Um, so now what we do is we add the errors and we make it such that, so we're going to add the errors and the way that you do that is you put your errors over here in this final column. When you add a random error, what you guarantee is that no one can tell what the answer is anymore. So if we add a random error here to the value B1 and we say B1 is equal to the actual sum of those things, right, which is in this case it's 6, but now what we're going to do is add a random error to a B1, right? B2 is going to be the sum of the secrets times the coefficients, which is 0 in this case, but now we're going to destroy that 0 and we're going to add a random error B2 to it, right, all the way down to plus E to the 5, and in general, for i samples, right, or for m samples, we're going to have to cook up m random errors. So these are e to the i. Okay, we add that random error in, and there are limits to how 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 large of a random error you can have. Um, 
the REGEV system says the errors have to be, every EI must be greater than the floor of Q and two negative. Okay, so whatever you have in terms of Q divide, take half of that and take the floor of that sign a negative. And they must be smaller than or equal to the floor of divided by two positive. Um, and in particular, in this case, with a Q of 19, okay, with a prime of 19, 16 prime of 19, we have that EI, all our errors that we add, so that we add to, to basically take away the uniqueness of the solution. Um, nine divided by two would be nine and a half. So the floor of that would be negative nine. So our valid range for putting errors into this system is between negative nine and positive nine. So this will be negative nine, two, Right. And so this is what happens, right? Let's say we decide to pick an error. You, you can look in the notes at, at what we did, but let's say we make this, this error here, this error, let's say it's equal to one. Well, now we're not going to see a six here. We're going to see a six plus one, which is equal to seven. So do you see what we're doing here? Um, this one, let's say we make it equal to zero. So this one, this is equal to zero. And this won't change, this will still be a zero, right? This next one here, let's say, look at the last one. The last one, if we make this equal to, say, a negative three. So basically what we're gonna have is eight, and this will go eight minus three, and we'll see in our sample, we won't see eight, which allows us to find the solution anymore. We're gonna see a five. And what this means is if you don't know where the errors are, so unless we have some information that we know that an error occurred in the last and the first sample, when we pick our samples, we'll have no idea whether we're actually finding the correct solution, right? And the whole learning with error problem is based on the fact that there's no way to know, right? You don't have error information. There's no way to know whether when you pick those certain equations to solve problem on this lattice, whether you found the actual solution or not. So in other words, your private key, the secrets that were used to build these numbers are perfectly secret as long as you put in random errors, right? If you put in no errors, anyone can solve it just like we did on the, on the board behind, right? So with no errors, solvable by anyone using any of the equations. Throw in random errors, and now anyone can go ahead and solve it, but they won't know whether they have the right answer. And there's no way of knowing whether you have the right answer. Now, there are things to determine that you probably have the right answer, right? Which is to get more than the samples you have, right? So one technique that you can use to build confidence that you've actually found the solution to the overall system is to ask for more samples, right? So to get a hold of 100 samples or 200 samples, and at that point, you might see a pattern of some solution popping up over and over again. Right? But again, that you can't tell for sure. It'll never be certain. Right? You can only have guesses of what's likely to be the solution to the problem. Okay. So, and that's where, so we'll go over to the notes, but basically that's where we leave the notes here. So let's go to our notes. In the notes, so we we just did solving without the errors, right? And basically, what I did on the whiteboard was this just shows the main theme. It doesn't actually show all the details, so we did that. And let me just uh, bring up a comment bubble in case people have questions here as we're going through this. Um, so if you put in some errors, so in this case, in the notes, what I did is I put in an error in the third and fourth equation, very small error of just plus one, negative one. And again, that error of plus one means we don't see a 14 here. We see a 14 plus one and we get the information that the sum is equal to 15, even though that, so that's wrong. The sum should be 14, but we don't see it. We see a 15 here. And the next one has an error of negative one. So instead of seeing the correct sum of 17, we see uh, an incorrect sum of 16, right? So if you don't know that those errors were placed in here. You just start working off the system 
and you'll find that there is no one unique solution. So yes, if you solve for the equations that don't have the errors in them, namely the first, second, and last, what you'll find is you do get the solution 416. But when you solve for, say, the last three equations, you'll get a different solution. In this case, I don't know what it was, but yeah, so you'll find another solution here of 7, 18, and 12, and you can't tell which one is the correct one, right? How do you know <laughs> which one is right? Is it this one or is it this one? No one knows. And there could be others, right? There could be other combinations of equations that you can solve to reduce it from three unknowns to two unknowns to one unknown, okay? So basically what we have is no one, there is no way to find the unique solution here. And that forms the basis for uh, the security of the system, right? Without information about the errors, those secrets are safe, right? People can guess them, but you know, you can all, you could have always guessed them. There's no way to extract them, right? So uh, questions there, right? Questions about, so basically we could do another example of introducing the errors, but it would be another round of what you just saw on the whiteboard and we get a different answer. Right? And we come to the conclusion of what's the answer? Uh, no one knows. We don't know. We have an answer. I don't know if it's the right one. There's no way of knowing. Okay. So uh, questions about, now we have LWE with the errors. And with the errors, that's where it really gets interesting. Good. Okay, so just before we run out of time here, I am running a little bit of overtime. Um, what I'll do is I'll, thinking ahead, we're gonna have a class on Thursday and we'll do a quiz based on this. So what should you know how to do for the quiz? You should know how to, so all these, these, these problems are solvable, but I'm gonna do one on the board here and we'll go a little bit of overtime into our meeting time. Um, let's do 10.1. And, and what I'll show is how you can translate this. Um, so the learning with errors, um, a learning with errors problem is communicated to you with listing the samples. So we'll show how to translate the samples into a system. And you may or may not get error information. If you do get the error information, you correct the system based on that information. If you don't, you find all the possible solutions, right? So let's do let's do 10.1 and you'll see what I mean, right? We'll, we'll reconstruct the system. We'll take the error vector, error vector is um, one zero in this case, and we'll correct for that to get a corrected system, right? Which is now error free. And then we'll go ahead and solve that one. Okay, so let's do one of those. So we'll uh, go back to normal mode here and I just need to actually copy the question down correctly. And what I might do, I'm going to save one of these boards. So I'll save this board, but you'll just hear um, photo booth take a picture here. This is everyone thinks that this photo booth for some reason they have a very Amer they have, there's a Mario Kart type sound. I don't know, maybe that sort of dates me that I used to play Mario Mario Kart, but it sounds like the start, you know, Mario Kart where it goes and then you hear the. Anyways, I digress. So we'll just take a picture of that. And now we can wipe the board and do. Do one of these problems. Um, so 10 point, this is 10.1. And what are some of our parameters for 10.1? It's uh, um, Q is equal to 13 and the error vector is zero one. So we'll put that down. So everywhere we're gonna be doing mod 13, Q is equal to 13 and our error is equal to one and zero. So given the, the, given the error vector, we can correct the system and find the one unique solution, right? So that's, that's the, you know, the choice that, um, the, the sort of choice of paths you have for every one of these problems is if you're given the error information, correct it, find the one unique answer. If you're not given the error information, find all the possible answers that could result, right? So in this case, we have our error information, so we correct it. Let's actually reconstruct the system now. 
So our first sample is row six. So we're given zero and six. Second sample is going to be that same pair. It is equal to zero, two, and nine. So zero, two, nine. Right. So let's construct our system. And constructing our system, this is going to correspond to one x x plus zero y, okay, because these are your a, a coefficients for your secrets x and y, and this will be your b value, so this is equal to b, but remember this b value of 6 contains the error, so this is 6, so we'll just note that this, this contains, contains error of, what did we do? We added plus one to it. So to correct this, we're gonna have to subtract one, right? One was added into it because that was the error. We need to subtract one out of it, okay? So we're gonna make this minus one, so we know that this is equal to five. Um, this guy is zero x plus two y, and that's equal to nine. Okay, and nine contains the error, but in this case, the error was nothing. So there's no reason to, get one, one thing you could do is just say nine minus zero, right? So nine minus zero is equal to nine. Okay, so yes, there's, there's technically could have been an error in there, but in this case, the error was nothing, right? So we'll correct with nothing and just leave it as, as nine, okay? Um, and now we go ahead and solve. This one, luckily for us, this one's a really easy equation to solve, right? Um, the first one, we don't, we actually get our answer right off the bat, 1x, so, so solving, we'll go right into the solution, 1x plus 0y, this just means x is equal to 5. Okay, so there's our first secret, x1 is equal to 5, and our second secret here, we're going to have to solve this equation of 2y is equal to 9, right, okay? and so what you don't want to do, those of you who've done linear algebra, what you're thinking is y is equal to 9 by 2, which is 4 and a half. Give yourself a check mark and walk away. No, right? No, no, no. Do not do that. No check marks, right? To solve this, we're going to need to multiply. There is no division that you can do. We're going to need to multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of 2 mod 9. Sorry, the inverse of 2 mod 13. Okay, so we're going to need eight verse two mod q, which is thirteen. Okay, and the inverse of two mod thirteen. So you could use the EA to do this, but for you know for small modulus values like this, you can quickly trial and error through the first twelve integers, and you'll find that two times seven in this case is fourteen. So seven is the inverse, right? So we know that 2 times 7 is equal to 14, which is the same thing as 1 mod 2. Okay, so the inverse of 2 is 7. Okay, inverse of 2 mod 13. So that's what we'll do here, right? We'll multiply 7 times 2 y is equal to 7 times 9. Okay, and 7 times 2 y, that's 14, which is 1, so that goes away. We have y, and over on this side, okay, now we have to do some reduction, right? So we have 7 times 9 will be a 63. Now we're going to have to take away 63. Um, we're going to have to calculate 63 mod 13, right? So 63 divided by 13. In this case, is 4 and change, right? So subtract that 4 times 13, and we get a remainder of 11 in this case. So this is equal to 11. Right? And that's your second one, right? So your second one is y is equal to 11. And that's the check mark. Okay? So therefore, the actual secret in this case is xy, which is equal to s1 and s2, is 5 and 11. 
So that's a, the general strategy you can use right, for um, given the information. So the information will always be posed in this sample format coefficients and sum values, right hand sum values. These sum values contain the errors. So if you're given the error information, you can correct for that right? and then you solve. In questions like 10.2, you're not given the error information, right? So in this case, you can only find what is an approximate solution, right? We don't know what the errors were. So when you find it, you'll get something, you'll, you'll get one unique solution in this case, because there's only two equations, two unknowns, but you won't be able to say conclusively that it's equal to that, right? And that's what you'll find in the, um, in the notes when it's approximate. So what we just did here, we found that the secret was 511, right? X is equal to five, Y is equal to 11. If you're not given error information, all you can say is, I don't know, it's about three and four from the samples that I have, but if you give me two different samples, I'll probably get a different answer. And that's what you see happening in 10.3, right? 10.3, you're given three, one, two, three samples with two unknowns. So there's basically three ways you can solve this system. You can take the first two, you can take the last two, or you can take the first and last. And each of those is gonna, gi gonna give you, it, they can give you identical solutions, but in this case, each of them gives you a different approximate solution, right? And if you don't like that, I'm sorry, that that's the best you can do, right? Without the error, infor in error information, you'll never know the secret, right? You can just approximate it over and over again, right? So that's the idea there. Uh, I guess you missed that. I didn't turn on the screen share for that. So let me just show you that. Uh, forgot that the screen share wasn't on. So what I was just showing here is for, say, for example, 10.3, you're given three equations, but there's only two secrets to determine. So you can take the first two, the second two, or the first and last. And that will give you, so in this case, I've, I've shown taking the first two, the first and last, and the second two gives you a different equation, a different solution, a different secret value each time. Okay. Um, and then so Hardiel was asking here, just missed that. Um, so do you have, yeah, you have to solve for all of them, right? So if you're not given um, the error information, you solve for them all, right? If you're given the error information, you can correct and pick whichever ones you want and then you'll only get one unique value no matter which ones you pick, right? Because you've corrected for the information. It's an ideal system now. Okay, so back to the main mode here. All right, so questions. Questions about that. Good, okay. Um, so uh, over the next, uh, what, day or two, right? So we'll see you on, on Thursday again. Uh, again, for your quiz on Thursday, expect some, you know, something like this, where here's the error information, here's the system, correct for it and solve. Um, or it may be, here's no, there's no infer, uh, error information, find at least two different approximate solutions or something like that, right? Obviously you can get carried away if it's a large system and you have no error information, there can be many, many different solutions that you look for. Uh, you won't have time to do that on a quiz. So I'll, I'll keep the scope of the computations manageable to within uh, 20 minutes, right? Um, okay, so be ready to do that and uh, have fun learning with errors, right? That's what it's all about. Okay, so we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, the other thing, just before we sign off here, is there are quiz meetings today. We're running a little bit late. So the first three, so Remy, Masera, and Arnab, um, you're, you're the first three, but we might be a little bit delayed, right? So if you do have your um, I'll try to catch up and get everyone done by, um, certainly by 11. Um, and I'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Good. Yes. And I agree, Kiefer, Mario Kart 64 is the best version, right? That was the classic one. Although the Switch version is pretty good too. I like playing that with my kids. But anyways. Okay. See you on Thursday.